So now, that particular reading that you've just been, um, piece from, from the Gospel of John you've just been listening to, is one of the most beautiful passages in, in Scripture, in the Bible, because it says so, so much. And I, I want to begin by asking you um, a question. Which would you prefer to have a friend who was always right or to have a friend who was in right relationship with you? And I think I, think I know the answer. Which would you prefer to have a friend who was always right or a friend who was connected with you? And I think, again, I know the answer. So, why do we not apply, apply that to, to God? Where did we get the idea? And most of us have the idea that in order for God to love us, we got to be always right. We can never fail. Where did that idea come from? And you know, and I know, people who are always right, they're obnoxious. They're a pain in the, you know, whatever you like to say. Somebody who's always right. And um, I don't know, maybe you're married to one. But, um, <laughs> but, but you know, you know, you, you know what, I, what I mean. And, and then in comes that other line in the gospel that, yeah, uh, you are, are, I am the vine, and you are the branches. So we got to be connected with Jesus and in right relationship. But that does not mean never failing, never falling flat, being without sin, not at all, not at all. And it's very often when we're really down there and we really have made a mess of things, absolute mess of things, that we're closest to the, to the Lord. Because to get it wrong is part of being human, part of human nature. That's so, so true. What's the, meaning, what's the meaning of that phrase in the gospel, you are, uh, you need to be pruned, pruned? Well, you know yourself, if you have a fruit tree or money or any kind of a tree, really, you need to kind of cut, cut, cut it back now, now and again, not let it, you know, get out of, get out of hand. So, prune, I would see that as the various difficulties and maybe the pains and the setbacks and the other things we go through in, in life, the problems and the situations that we encounter. Believe me, they are all vitally important in our lives. And most of us don't see it like that. Like, most of us don't see it like, like that. And God never lets anything go to waste. That's a beautiful thing, beautiful thing about God. And coming back to being connected, uh, being, being in right relationship. Well, go back to the Scriptures and just look at things Jesus said and, and did. When or where did Jesus, in the name of God, say you got to be absolutely perfect to be my disciple. He never said, said, said that. But he, had, he welcomed sinners, those who were weak, those who were frail. He welcomed, he welcomed them. Never, never, never turned them, never turned them away. And 
we got to realize, we got to realize that. Uh, you're on the way uh, to salvation, and it doesn't begin afterwards, but it begins, it begins here when you are connected to the vine, and the vine is love. And in the, in the letter to St. John, the second reading this morning, he's saying it's, life is about love. It's about, about love. And one of the things I was sharing at the last Mass, one of the things that brings me great joy, oh, for years and years and years and years, is I look at you, especially you who, who are married, and I see you as a couple, and when I see you close and connected and in right relationship, I love that because you don't realize how, what you do for me when I see that. Two people absolutely committed, connected, and in right, in right relationship. That is beautiful, absolutely beautiful. By your example, wonderful. And one final question for you. And be honest with yourself. How, how comfortable are you with admitting at times that you're wrong, with saying, I am sorry, and I ask you to forgive me? I got that wrong. Wouldn't, wouldn't that be wonderful? Wouldn't that be wonderful if our politicians now and again said, I got it wrong, huh? I don't think I ever heard any politician saying, I got it wrong. But none of us, none of us, no matter who you are, none of us are always right. And to share what you're going back to, the example of being married and being and being a couple. I remember years and years ago when I was involved in marriage uh, encounter, meeting a lovely, a lovely couple who shared with me something that they did every day of, of their lives. And it was this, they said, every evening when we retire for, for the night, I turn to my wife and I say, honey, if in, any, if in any way or anything I said or did today I offended you, I am sorry and I ask you to forgive me. And then the wife, his wife, would turn to him and say the same thing. My love, if, any, if in any way by what I've said or done today I offended you, I ask you to forgive me. How beautiful. They had a solid, beautiful relationship. So again, think about that. How comfortable are you with saying, I'm sorry, and I ask you to forgive me? It's a beautiful thing to say, and it's very, it's very, very freeing. You feel free. But have you ever noticed when you know you did something wrong, and you know it was your fault, but you haven't got the backbone or the courage to ad admit that, then what happens? You begin lying. That doesn't free you. It ties you up in knots. You begin lying, trying to defend yourself. And we see that again happening time and time and time again with people who are caught flagrante delicto in almost in the act of doing wrong, but they don't have the courage, the courage to simply ad, ad, admit that was my fault. That's a beautiful 
that's a beautiful sign of character, to be able to admit our faults and our failings. And that's when we really say we are connected to the constant gardener. That's a nice way of looking at, at Jesus, at God. The constant gardener looking after us all the time and using everything for our benefit.